Welcome to Glory Models, I'm Philip Flory and on today's show, paints on test, yes they've arrived at last, the Atari paints, uh, the new acrylic range has arrived so we can finally get those on test for you, as well as we're going to be looking at surface primers, um, some of the new Valero colours that are out, and the new Vallejo uh, which is their airbrush thinner which apparently is a new formula so we'll be testing those. The Seahawk build has finally come to an end, a uh, little short build on this one, only six parts but really was a dream to come together after we got rid of all the filler jobs and the horrible thing around the cockpit with the bars work and everything else, so that one's complete, so members you can see the last two parts of that this week. We started on the Wingnuts Wings kits, uh, lots of questions because I posted some photos up on Facebook so I'll be answering uh, some of those before part one uh, is on the site next week. We've got reviews on Microtape. Uh, which is uh, quite a nice new product that I've been testing this week and been playing with, so we'll be having a look at that. Plus all the news from the forum, the group builds and the six. Okay, well before we start, I must say a massive thank you to all of your birthday wishes. Um, I tried to keep somewhat quiet, I hinted a lot beforehand and then kept it quite quiet. Um, but as I say, I was amazed by how many cards came from you guys as well. Honestly, you don't have to do that. And some of it I'm thinking like, what is this? And there's little gifts in and things like that. So I must say a very big thank you to all of you who have done cards and presents and well wishes either on Facebook or through the site, through the forum or just general emails to me. Really means a lot. And I must admit, I know a lot of you guys talk about inspiration and I inspire you to do it. It's a two way thing because it's what keeps me going as well. It's getting the feedback from you guys. Some weeks, you know, I do a show and you don't get much feedback and you do have that thing in the back of your head that thinks, you know, a couple of thousand people watched it and no one's mentioned it, was it crap? You know, um, and then I get other weeks like last week where everybody was mentioning it and everything else. It inspires you to think, right, okay, come on, next week we can do, doo -doo -doo, and we can make this bigger and better and everything else. So it is a two way sort of door with this. I might inspire you by talking here and everything else and showing you what I do and then getting your feedback and seeing your work as well. A couple of you guys spoke to me this week and said, look, give me your honest feedback. What do you think to this? And I've given it to you and you've come back and we've discussed various ideas and it does, it's very inspiring, you know, and. So that's what it is. So I won't go on about it, but I say a big thank you to all the birthday wishes. So that's it now. The big four row, it's all downhill. Or just life start, depending where you are. Everybody who's under 30 says that's it. Everyone's over 40, they're like, oh no, life starts now. Yeah, move on. So anyway, a um, couple of things happened. Uh, we've got to talk about the Airfix Around the World uh, build. You can see here is now in Croatia, so it's starting to make its world round. We spoke about it a couple of new shows ago. Um, just to recap, this is for Help the Heroes in the UK. There's a our, uh, Airfix Lightning, the 148 kit. We've done it ourselves. It's a lovely kit. It's making its way right the way around the way right to the way around the world. Okay, with various modelers from all around the world um, who are doing individual parts of the build, and then it'll make its way back to the UK as well. So have a look at their Facebook page, four links are on the site as ever uh, on the main page, uh, you can have a look, pop along to there if you want to donate or just like, friend, whatever you want to do with the site, um, but as I say, it's a very well worth cause. The other big thing this week, um, there are not many kit releases at the moment, it's that time of year I think, but certainly the big one that sort of appeared, when we say big one we mean it is this, this is the Monster HK Models 132nd B17 Flying Fortress. Now, it's been spoken about a long, long time, and I've got various views about large scale kits and everything else, which I won't bore you with now. But needless to say, when you see this picture here, you can see exactly what I mean. This is courtesy of Sprue Brothers, which gives you an idea of how big this model is. So, and it you know, beggars belief, I think when you're at that scale, you might as well stick some engines in it, some RC gear, and off you go. You might as well fly it, because I know some of the guys saying on the forum, you know, you've got smaller RC planes than this. Okay, so it is a monster. And where do you put it? Like, you know, I've got this table here, which is, what, 150 mil, uh, sorry, 150 centimetres across, uh, and I think it's going to struggle to be built even on a thing like this. And I can't imagine many modelers have got the room to physically build this, let alone take it to shows and everything else. I understand the wings are going to come away, but still, it's it's going to be an absolute monster and we're to that scale where unless you're you know lucky as hell as I am to have a massive workroom like this you know where can you do it it's not going to be a kitchen table build I can tell you so price tag as well I don't know at the moment I know a lot of people are speculating about it it's going to be 200 pound plus I should think uh, I'd be really surprised if it comes under that so you're going to be talking best part of 300 dollars for it um, other kits though that they've brought out like the B25 I know Steve Sutcliffe on the site one of the team guys he's doing it and it's absolute stunning, and it's about right, you know, it's about this size, it's very impressive and everything else, but when you're talking this, and they're talking about Lancaster, I can see it sort of ending in tears, shall we say. So anyway, uh, 
Big news is the Seahawk is finished, you can see here. Now, uh, this particular kit has given me no end of trouble right the way from start to finish on it. It's been one of those ones where it's a love-hate relationship. It loves to hate me and it's fought me all the way. Uh, we have spoken about it, especially in the build, about the front end should be one piece glass and go on and, and save all the things. But that said, I have to say, now it's done and looking like this, it is absolutely lovely. And it's one of those aircraft that, you know, you get to a certain stage and all of a sudden we got on with the weathering like you saw last week and all of the, everything fell into place. And all of a sudden you've got a very smart looking helicopter. So as you say, it's done now. So members, you can watch part, I think it's, uh, is it five and six or six and seven? Uh, basically it's a half hour part and then a 20 minute part after that one. So I've put them up this week because I know you're all itching to see the wing that wings one. Uh, so that is now available on the site and you can see all about how we come together at the end. The full detail thing about obviously putting the wash on with an airbrush and getting rid of it uh, and rinsing it down. You didn't see that last week but obviously there's that area about rinsing down the wash and everything else. So anyway, that is on the site now which brings this build to a sad end. Now, which brings us to this. So, let's just bring this out of the way for a moment. As you can see down here, we have got the, the actual part, I'll just drop this top cam down just a little bit. You can probably see here, I've done all the woody work bits and all the wiring and everything else on this. And I must just admit, I was in absolute terror of rigging, wiring and everything else. I think a lot of that is, back in the day I had a go at some 148 kits and it's so small, so fiddly and they weren't exactly brilliant that it fought me all the way. Now this little gem has been absolute joy to build and it's been going together absolutely fantastic so I've got no problem with it at all and even putting in the wiring work which obviously this is all my own it doesn't come with a kit so I have been playing with millions of miles of piano wire which uh, as you'll see in the build is quite difficult to cut you, if you watch the build you'll understand that one okay but as I said it is cracking on with it I've got two parts in the bag already which gets us just past this area as well because I've done all the woodwork and everything else so that will be up next week. I'll explain now, there's no new show next week, purely because it's Easter. I'm having a little bit of time off. I'm gonna take three whole days off. So it means I wouldn't have time to do the new show with everything else. So what we'll do is next week, I intend to have done for you the SIG builds, so the Tamiya one, which I have to speak about now, we've actually had 116 entries into this one, which is amazing. We've never had that many before. So we've got 116 medals on order. The medals will be in next week, early next week, I'm told. And then obviously what I'll do, I'll speak to you during the week about getting those out. But next week's show will be slightly different because what I'm gonna have is back to back um, obviously the actual the group build video and we'll do the Century Series SIG videos for you to watch uh, and everything else. So it's a bit like when they do the things on telly when the presenter's not there. So they just, Top Gear would call it the best of, okay? But you know, as you say, we'll have this one. So next week, Wing That Wings part one will be up, which will get you basically to here, okay? And then um, obviously the group builds as well. So there's still plenty to see on that one. Okay, so we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago and I ordered these sets. Now these were brand new. We've, I've got the press release thing here. <laughs> so here it is. And we spoke about it um, last week. I'll just move this one down before I clip it. Okay, um, and we weren't sure. And there's lots of speculation. And I know a lot of guys were saying to me, oh, it's just Valero in somebody else's bottle and all the rest of it, or Vallejo, or however now you want to pronounce it, okay? Um, but as I said, it was really difficult to know. So a couple of things, um, we're going to put these completely on test now and see exactly what we get. So the first thing is the colour range, okay? How does it compare to everybody else's? Well, as you know, you know, you can't see here, but over there I have the full set of Valeros, we've got pretty much all the Gunzo set, we've got the Tamiya set, um, I've got a lot of Model Master now to be honest, um, and we've got lots of buffables, things like that. Now I have decided to drop um, the extra acrylics range purely because it's not the easiest stuff to work with and part of the reason why I use their paints is because they filled a gap that you know other manufacturers had and that is the trouble we'll talk about with paints because you know you might say okay I've got the entire set of Tamiya no problem at all but the thing is Tamiya don't do such colours like uh, light ghost grey or dark ghost grey. They do equivalencies, but you'll always have to be very, very careful when you're talking about equivalencies because at the end of the day, how close they are. It may be just some guy who's thought of this mix and yeah, it'll go and you'll read about also, you know, oh, you had two drops to seven drops of this. 
it's always easier to start with the correct colour. If you've got something roughly in the ballpark of the paint colour, you can adapt it, i.e. make it darker, lighter. And certainly, if you're following my builds when I'm doing a lot of my aircraft, especially these ones over my shoulder, I don't conform to all aircraft are exactly the same colour because it's true. If you get a load of aircraft all in a line, they're all going to be different colours because weathering affects all paintwork. It's going to lighten it, it's going to bleach it. Okay, In certain areas, it's going to darken it with staining and stuff like that. So to be an exact shade is a little bit, you know, going to be a lucky shot. So if you can get one that's roughly the right colour and then you lighten it, you dark it, when you weather it, it's going to darken up, things like that. You can get all the types of paint, but you do need it. Hence, whilst we have different ranges. So, from my point of view, I loved the Model Air stuff, and I used to use it for donkey's years all the time, no problem. But again, there's gaps in it, because certain of their colours, they would say it's an equivalent to whatever colour, it was nothing like it. So I would then go out and perhaps get something in the guns range that filled that gap. So for instance, the guns range, colours which you can't find very easy in others is all the Middle Eastern colours, Israeli um, Defence Force colours, things like that. Those greens, those colours, there again, they're not exactly spot on. Their browns are not exactly correct, but it's very, very close, so it's a good starting point. So hence, whilst I think, okay, we'll go with those. And then obviously it's personal choice as well. The Guns range is very, absolutely lovely. It's as hard as nails. It's great to handle where Vallejo stuff, to be honest, if you handle it in the same spot, you know, holding onto a fuselage and as you're putting the finishing details on, it's very easy to rub through the paint. You don't have that trouble with guns at all. Tamiya, probably somewhere in between. So, it's always nice when a new manufacturer comes out and claims to have this nice new range. Now, as we spoke before, uh, Atari used to use the Model Master range of paints, so all their call-outs uh, call were in uh, Model Master. Nowadays, they've got their own paint, and when you look at their range, which we looked at last time, it's not massive. If you wanted to collect the set, it's doable. It's not like some of the colours that just go on forever. Okay, so you could go through and get them all. And they do seem to cover quite nicely. So you've got your standard type of colours as you run down. Um, and then obviously as things progress, you sort of move your way down to sort of dark gold greys and everything else, which are your standard colours. Yes, there's still going to be gaps in it. Yes, as far as I can see, they don't do Middle Eastern colours and things like that. But again, that's the thing to it. So... First up, we will have a quick look in the pack. I should have really bought a knife now. That's all right, we can have a look. So, what do you actually get? What we're going to do, we're going to compare these a bit later on. We're going to move into the spray bay, but we'll talk about actually what you get. So, these little bottles here are 20 mil, I do believe. I'm just trying to look. Yes, these are 20 mil bottles. These are not thinned, so don't think you're coming along now with something like Model Air, which is thinned. Okay, Pricing as well, it's a bit difficult because they're not available technically in the UK yet. I got these in from Hong Kong through Lucky Model. Uh, the gift set works out at £15, and we get one, two, three, four, five, six colours in the gift set. So I'm not sure individual cost. I believe they're going to be around about the £2 mark. They're going to be a little bit more expensive than the Model Air. The big difference, though, is obviously the Model Air black tops are thinned. Okay, so you don't need to thin them anymore. Whereas the uh, Italiary ones, you are gonna have to thin. So immediately we've got more paint in this one and we've got to thin it. So, you know, when you're talking monetary wise and when you're looking at these two, you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna have, you know, both these paints, you're also gonna get a lot more for your money out of the Italiary one than you are the Model Air. How they spray, we'll talk about that later on. The other thing as well, and I know a lot of guys spoke about this, pull the camera you can see a bit more um, this one here has this screw top business okay so you can easily pour paint back in now I know I got slightly flamed by a few of you were saying oh you can take the tops off yeah but not one handed you can't and that's what I meant was yes I do it as well you pull off the top but when you've got gunk and paint around there it's not the easiest thing to get off you know when you've got something like this you can break it and then you can easily whip the top off, pop it back on. You can't do that with Model Air. That's what I meant about tipping back in, and then obviously we get the contamination guys sort of going, oh, you can't do that. Trust me, I do. The other thing as well, smell for smell, you know, it's it smells like poster paint. There's no real harsh smells to it. And they do smell extremely similar. I wouldn't, you know, put it past them being the same just like this. As I said, though, it's a lot, lot thicker, so it's very hard to tell on a direct comparison exactly what you get. Colour range, as we've said before, colour range with Model A, you've basically got everything. Now, they've got a new range of colours come out, which are the 100 series, as I call it. So I've got here the 114, which is the US Blue Grey. 
They've also got now, uh, we've got here uh, 110, which is extra uh, dark sea gray REF. And we've got here 112, which is US sand now as well, which is this sort of reddy sand color uh, as well. So they've also got the entire range now of all the RLM colors, which I know they had before, but they were sort of equivalencies of they've got them all now. Other things that we have here at the same time, we've got um, Vallejo's apparently new formula airbrush thinner. So we'll be having that on a test in a moment. And then also what we've got here is the surface primer. Now I know these have been around a while and they come in various colors. So we can get this one in a gray, in a black or in a white. Okay, so we can put that on test as well. The other thing as well, we've got new color range out called surface primers in light ghost gray. Seems a bit odd because technically it's not a primer color, but as I said, these are polyurethane paints rather than your standard water paint that these are. So these apparently have got like self-leveling properties. Um, they're supposed to be a lot more hard wearing, impenetrable, everything else like that. Uh, basically handle resistance. That's the difference between these polyurethane paints and your standard sort of, you know, paint colors from Vallejo. I don't know if they're going to expand the range or if this is going to be the way it goes, but certainly at the moment they do seem to be very, very nice. But until we get them in the spray bay and have a, a good old test with them, we're never going to know. So let's get it in there. Okay, so here we are over in the spray bay. Uh, new camera angle, wide angle. You'll be seeing a lot more of these in the future. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to test the uh, surface primer. And then obviously we can spray the others over it. So this is the new-ish, shall we say, grey primer. This is, um, let's say it's polyurethane, which in a nutshell means it should be tougher, self-leveling, uh, and better generally coverage than your normal, obviously if you used to use uh, an acrylic paint. So you know what I use. I tend to use these, you know, whatever I've got lying around. Okay, so first thing that you'll notice is, you might have seen on the other one, um, it does separate at the bottom, all right? So make sure you give it a good old shake first before you come through. So what we're going to do, we're going to test it on this little bit of wing here. So what I'm going to do is just whip your turntable out of the way for a minute. Okay. And what we'll have is a piece of this. Just protect a bit down here. Now this side has been, it's a bit of a mixture of both. It's pretty scratchy. You probably hear this side is horrible. Um, this is where we use, obviously, it's our standard demo bit that we use for everything, okay? So what we're going to do is have a go over here and see how well it covers, because this in the, in the middle is very smooth, it's polished flat. The rest of it's quite textured, and we want to know if it will level that out. So for this particular one, as all of these we'll be using is the uh, Harder and Steenbeck. This is just the Evolution. It's got the Infinity Cap on the end, that's all. Little 2 mil colour cup, because we don't want to do too much cleaning. Great little flip up lids. These are straight from the bottle as directed. Okay, extractor going on. Check our flow. Seems to be coming out quite nice. So what we do is we're just gonna lay down quite a high air pressure. So we're shooting this at around about 20 to 25 PSI. Just gonna cover it down for the first pass. Okay, now this side over here, we're going to turn the air pressure down a little bit. Over here goes down. And spray this on. Check in the end of your needle cap like this to make sure you don't get any blobs appearing. When you're spraying high velocity paint, um, you do tend to get build up on the needle. That needle then will turn to spitting and it'll end up everywhere. So we'll just cover this. And immediately you can see when you're spraying this at a lower air pressure, you can see we've got a little bit of spotting. Looks like orange peeling going on. So I'm just going to turn up the air pressure just a little bit. Okay, that's the first bit gone. We just top this up to cover the entire thing. Okay, coming back. This is what I would call my working air pressure of around about 18 to 20 psi, just like that. Now the first thing that I notice is that it says grey on the bottle, but that looks extremely light to me. That looks more like white. When I'm saying grey, I'm thinking, you know, battleship grey. I'm not expecting white. But, I can say, it's uh, one of those things. We'll just see how that pans out. We'll see how long that takes to dry and how hard that is. So in the meantime, we'll just stick that out of the way. We've got down here, you probably see this shiny tail. That's coming up in a few weeks' time. But we've already sprayed this over, 
okay, once, and this has just got Tamiya grey paint on it, and I've just whipped around and I was playing with a few things up here just to see what it's like. So what we've got here is the Vallejo ones. Now, as you said, these are going to have to be thinned and everything else. So what we'll do, we'll do a quick colour change on this. So I'm just looking for my Vallejo cleaner, there we go. So what I've got here, so we'll just do a very quick colour change as if we're working in the real world. So what we've got here, if you haven't got one of these, sad, I always speak about it, but it's a godsend. It stops too much spray going everywhere. Basically what I do, loads of cotton wool or in this case kitchen roll in the bottom just soaks everything up. So it goes in like that. And all we do... rub around and then just put a drop more in and then I blow it out through the extractor. That's purely to get rid of anything to stand in the, the end still. Okay, so let me just flip that off a second. Alright, so first time of using this paint, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to get here. Uh, I'll just see if I've got a little colour pot here. One second. Okay, so normally you know what I tend to do is I'll just come along and I'll, a bit of a dodgy pop that one, um, I'll literally just pop it straight into the colour cut, all right, and then add paint and thinners and away we go. But I don't know what this paint is like. I've never used it before. I'm not even sure it's separated properly at the bottom, even with a good shake. Uh, because it's thicker, it's going to take a lot more to shake it out. Now, it does appear to be, just looking as I am now, very similar to using the white top Vallejo paints. Now, they are not thin. I'm going to take a bit of thin, but I have got a little bit of brown down there. That does worry me. Okay, so opening up the top. You seem to have at the top here a little cap system that stops it runoff going everywhere. But it'd be interesting to see if you do get build up. So we're just going to put a little bit down there. And as you can see, as you pour it in... I don't know how well Top Cam picks this up, but we have got a little bit of uh, blueness, shall we say, in there, where it obviously hasn't mixed totally in here, and that's the trouble again. Thicker paints don't fit exactly brilliant. What we're going to do is use their thinners, okay? So it's white, milky looking stuff. So this first test, it's all of theirs. So I'm going to do a 50 50 and see where we start. All right, so we just pop that in. Brush clean, okay, and we'll give it a bit of a Whiz around in here. So it's their thinners, 50 50 mix just to start with and see what we get. Good old mix. Seems to mix very well, seems to be quite a nice colour. He says, almost firing at himself, just trying to get it off the brush. Okay, and as you look at it on here, it seems to cling quite nicely. It seems to be okay in the thing and all mixed. Looks like a quite a nice mix, no problem with that. But as I say, it's a bit like wine tasting using new paint. Have a look to see how it's clinging on the side, because just imagine that is your model. So if it just runs off, you know you're going to be in the trouble with, you know, water coming, you know, raining down, orange peeling, things like that, okay? So you want to see it cling on there quite nicely, all right? And it tends to cover the bottom. We've got no obvious separation between the two. So what we'll do now, we'll tip it into our colour cup. Okay, so we're going to check our flow as we do always, all right. And to be honest, that seems to be coming out very well. Smell-wise, there's nothing at all at this point. Quite happy with that, but we are, health and safety, going to flip the extractor on. Okay, so we're going to try it on this tail here, which is a bit of a pain, because it's awkward shape, all right, and we'll just see what we're going to get. So first of all, we're going to go for coverage. So we're just going to try it down the back end here and see what we get. Okay, so I've been a little bit gentle with it. I'm not blasting it down. Okay, I've just cut to air and just want to see what we get. So immediately it seems to have more of a, a satin finish to it. It's not a dead flat finish on these. But it seems to have nice coverage and everything else. So what we're going to do now, we're going to poke that in there. Hopefully you can see this still. 
all right, and we're going to see exactly what we can get in. So what I'm doing here is trying to see what coverage I get just straight out of the bowl. So it's standard 50-50 mix, all right? So it's not like we're playing with air pressures or anything else like that. I'm really trying to find the point where it doesn't like it. So I'm finding the break point there. Can see. I don't know if you can see what I was doing there, but what we're basically trying to do is work out the point where we're going to start to get runs and you've overloaded it. That way you can tell by looking at it you're very close and better stop. So what we did up here, we just did some standard sort of running around panel lining, as I would do any time. And then as I moved down here, we were putting progressively heavier coats, more paint and getting closer to see when it was going to fail. And to be honest, and, you know, I hate to you know immediately start thinking this stuff's great, but that was great because I was very very close, lots and lots of paint before it eventually broke, which then means you can really give this quite some stick and not worry too much about it. So if you were colouring in areas, you can come in very very heavy before you're going to break. And again, don't forget this is the first time 50/50 mix. All right. So there we go, we've done something like there, really heavy, and it's not running. It is sticking to it, it's not coming apart. Now obviously we haven't tried this on the plastic, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect, but certainly off the cuff, that does seem to be very, very nice. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to backfill this area, because we're going to overcoat with something else. So really this is just to use up the paint. So as you can see, I'm being quite ruthless with it, we're just chucking it on now with no obvious signs of running, occurring. So really, points for coverage. Um, it doesn't cover, if I'm honest, as well as Tamiya or the Guns range but it certainly covers better than standard Vallejo um, or perhaps a mixed thing. So their thinners obviously are working very, very well. What we're doing in a moment is try exactly the same thing with other people's thinners uh, and see what really happens. Okay, one colour cut gone. So what we do, we're going to use Vallejo thinners and see what it thins, um, Vallejo airbrush cleaner and see what happens. Because I'm still not overly convinced this isn't some sort of hybrid paint. Okay, again we're just in here, we'll blast this out. Cleans up extremely easily. Don't take any notice of the grey in the bottom of the colour cut there, but as you can see, it uh, really cleaned that very, very easily, no problem at all. Right, what we'll do now is I'm going to try it in the colour cut, so we're just going to try a little bit of X28 and to see how it performs with other people's thinners. So we're just going to do it again, a standard sort of 50-50 mix, just as we did. So this is just standard X28. It seems to break initially as you put it in, which is always a good sign. Now I haven't found anything yet, to be honest, that X28 doesn't fit, obviously in acrylic world. But, top cam can pick this out, because obviously the light issue, we have got separation on the top. It's gritty, it's grainy, and everything else. Now, we didn't have that, certainly, down in here at all. That's smooth, but I don't know how well the, the cameras are going to pick this up. But you might be able to see we have got graininess and grittiness in this paint. It doesn't like X28. It's separating from it. I don't know how well it'll spray. You can immediately see down here, it's speckly, it's spitting. It doesn't like it. There we go, look at that. As you can see there, it's just turning to glue. It's speckly, 
doesn't like X20A whatsoever. So this is a complete first for me. I've never seen that happen before. We're gonna have to ditch it because otherwise it's gonna ruin. And to be honest, as you can see, it's turned to mush. Which will be interesting to see now if we can actually get this out of the airbrush. Because what this tends to happen is when it gets down the end, it tends to go. So what I'm gonna use is uh, their thinners and hopefully it will break this up. And immediately when you pour this in, you can see it reacting with the paint. So what we're gonna try and do now is get this out, but this is actually turned completely. As you can see it on the brush, it's turned to glue, it's turned to tar. I think you're gonna to have to switch airbrushes here because I've got a feeling it's gonna take a lot of cleaning to get this out. This is why I should have bought more of their thinners. I only bought one little bottle thinking X20A would take care of it. So we might be all right, it might eat through. Could be just about safe on this. Okay. Just turn this off so you can hear me a bit better. So there we go, we've just found out in a very nice test that you can't use X20A with their paints, which is a complete first for me. I have never known that before. So I think that, I don't know, um, I don't use white top paints. I haven't used them for absolute donkey's years, to be honest. Um, so I'm actually thinking that the guys who are saying, oh, it's just Vallejo, well, not, because otherwise it was thin, because I use X20A to thin, uh, Vallejo thinners, uh, Vallejo paints. I'm hoping it's not going to bung up my nozzle too much. I can see bits flicking out of this where it's clearing through the nozzle. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is switch airbrushes because I can see it's all over the needle down in the bottom end there. So we'll clean that up a little bit later. So, airbrush number two. So what we're going to do now is we'll pretend that we never did all that and because we've now found out it won't go. We'll try another colour, thinned with their thinners. So what we'll do, their thinners into the colour cup and we're going to try another colour over the top. So again, looking at the bottom, it looks like it's very, very thick and it hasn't mixed totally down at the bottom there. So the only thing you could say, all paints that don't thin, you do get value for money because you have to thin them to an inch of their life. There again though, if you're now having to use their thinners, it'd uh, be quite interesting. But as you can see, that came out like absolute tar. Now I don't want to use that brush because it's a uh, thingy. If you might notice, what I do is I always use my older brushes which aren't dropping bristles and I cut the end off so they're flat. I find that gets down the end to the business end with the needle. So okay, in we go. And as we can see, it mixes beautifully. Thinking we're probably going to need a little bit more thinner in there. Bit more thinners. And remember, always listen to your paint. And when I say listen to it, I know, you know, when I do training here, people look at me and I can see they're going, he's gone, he's lost it. But no, what I mean is, when you're spraying it, if it's thin paint, it just comes through. If it's thick, your airbrush, you can hear it struggle trying to atomise at the end. So you know you need to thin it. Like there, you've, as soon as it goes from air, it comes to paint, it slows down and it's like, oh, we're having trouble, but we're pushed through. So it's a little bit thick. So what I'm going to do is up the air pressure. Seems to be coming through okay. So what we'll do, exactly the same on here. We're going to overcoat areas to see what we've got. So it covers itself beautifully, as we'd really expect, but you never know. So what we do, we're just going to whip up and put some lines in. So I'm pushing it now, I'm really up in the air pressure and getting quite close. You know, this isn't a real world test here because I'm really trying to see where it's going to go wrong and start coughing. But as you can see, 
it does seem to work very, very well. Again, I think it's probably going to be one of these paints where you might find out in time it doesn't work quite as well. Extra acrylics, classic example. You open the first bottle, beautiful. Open it two months later, nightmare. It could be the same. The only thing is, obviously thinning it, I think is going to be quite uh, problematic, I think, in a lot of ways. You're probably going to have to thin you know quite uh, extensively to see get your ratios right things like that but again I know this is too thick I can see it in the color cut now it looks too thick it's a little bit oily in here so what we'll do I just want to see how this reacts with other people so what we'll do we do the green because we can test it against their own green paint goes in just the dot but you can see how thick this is I think it will thin for ages and what we're going to try is Valero's airbrush thinner and see what happens. So we squirted it in, give it a roll round. There we go, it's broke. I was gonna say it wasn't gonna break it, but it's it's in there now, it's breaking it down. No problems at all. Just I know this brush is contaminated, but it will give us a look. So there we go, as we were saying about before, we've got a nice mix, it's a little bit thinner so it's not clinging quite as well on here, but as you can see it's, uh, it's quite a nice area. So what we're really saying is Vallejo, I think, have got something to do with uh, the uh, Italeri paint. Their thinners works with it, Tamiya X28 doesn't. What this tells me is obviously the Tamiya X28 is obviously chemical. We know it's like a synthetic thinner. It's like a, it has got more chemicals in it, shall we say. It's not proper water-based thinners, such as obviously these Valero ones are. I don't know exactly what is in these because they don't say it on the bottle, but it's obviously got something in there that works extremely well with these paints. So perhaps it is a little bit of truth in it that Vallejo are behind these paints. I have to say, just using it, you know, we've just done a quick on test here for 20 minutes, but, you know, I would say that it covers extremely well. It's very, very thick. You're going to have to thin it, but then from a money point of view, you're going to be able to paint huge swathes of aircraft with no problem. Little things, I don't know, they're calling out here that this is like forest green in an FS number, but it's saying it's like REF green. Well, as we know, both of those aren't the same. So there may be some issues with the actual uh, labelling and things like that. But certainly, it's drying off quite nicely now. It's touchable. Don't forget, it's had a very, very heavy coat, but it seems to be okay. You know, I, it's, it's not going to be as quick and as dry as Tamiya and everybody else's. I think the chemicals in those is what makes it dry so very, very quick, okay? But that does seem to be very nice. I haven't obviously tried it with things like cellulose thinners to see if that will thin it or anything else like that. Because to be honest, I'm trying to move away from all the nasties again. I moved away and I found myself using Mr. Surface, uh, Mr. Hobby self-leveling thinners. And I'm thinking, hold on, I'm going back in time because, you know, the reason I moved away from it was health and safety and I didn't want to have nasty chemicals when I can have less nasty chemicals, shall we say, and things like that. Anyway, let's have a look at our primer. Wow, that is super smooth. Primer has worked an absolute treat. That's a very nice primer. So this is the uh, polyurethane surface primer um, from Vallejo. It has covered everything without destroying, um, obviously, because we've got down here some of this rescribing work we did before um, and filler work, but it hasn't destroyed any detail whatsoever. It's covered everything, but we've got all the detail down here. You know, it'd be interesting to put it on test against other things, but certainly from this point of view, it worked very, very well. So there we go. What we're going to do is let these totally dry off. I'm going to do a couple more tests off camera just to have a play with it and see exactly how I get on with it. And then I'll come back and give you the results in the next part of the show. Still to come, all your questions, uh, some of the new camera angles we'll be looking at uh, coming up shortly, and the results from uh, our on test on paints and primers. Okay, so we'll catch up with the paint a little bit later on, but first of all, a uh, quick review here on, uh, I think it's pronounced Azuzu, um, and this is Micro Thin masking tape now this stuff here we're not any strangers to masking tape little thin ones anyway uh jammy dog they do the blue the white and everything else but this stuff is really stupidly thin when we're talking stupidly thin 
0.4 of a millimeter. This stuff is absolutely microscopic. Now, you know, you might be thinking, well, why would you need something like that? And I was thinking that too, until I used it on this. Now this is for the wing that wings, you'll see this in part two in a couple of weeks time, um, about using this one down and popping it down. But I masked up the ribbing with it because it is so thin and so microscopic. So it worked really well. Now it comes in 1.5, um, I think that's 0.7. I've got a feeling that's 0.5 and 0.4 or something. No, perhaps it's point, uh, so I should have done my home workout. I've taken them out of the box, can't remember the sizes. So anyway, uh, 0 0.5, I think that's point 0.0, 0 0.7, and I'm sure this is 0 0.4, and it's absolutely microscopic. The only thing you might want to do though is protect it a little bit, because it's on a roll like this, and a bit like that happens with the the jammy dog, you can see it starts to delaminate from itself, and a lot of this is because it's picking up all the crap on the outside. Um, so, you might want to keep them in a packet or the boxes or something else like that to stop fluff getting caught because when you peel it off, the fluff comes with it. And if you're doing that type of delicate masking, you're going to ruin your finish as you go right the way down. Okay, news, right. Um, Okay, you're probably looking at it now. So if we look at down here, this is walleye vision. Now, some of you might know, I'm quite a fan of the old GoPro and attaching it on the car and various extreme things I tend to do and get up to in my spare time. Um, so what we're planning on doing is, I've got two of these guys now, okay? Um, and because I've got the slightly better one now, it can do higher resolution than I need it to do, um, and in wide and narrow and everything else. Now, you've probably seen it a little bit uh, ago when we had it down in the spray bay. Now, the idea for this is, is that I'm gonna wear this, because sometimes we do this, you can't see exactly where I'm at and what I'm doing. So the thing is, you know, it's sort of come to a head, but I was doing this work down on this little guy here. It's so fine and intricate that I need a camera to really be on the end of my eyes. Now I've looked into getting cameras that fit on your glasses and stuff like that, but for the resolution we need, they are absolutely thousands and thousands of pounds. So anyway, we've gone for the other option and I've got the more high-end um, GoPro here. And the idea with that is now, one, you're in widescreen, this is just, you know, just a bit of fun, but obviously I can put this in narrow and I can wear it on my head and show you exactly what I'm doing. So when I'm in the spray bay and camera angles are tight and things like that, I can get you in on a first person. Now I'm still experimenting with this camera angle that you've got here and playing with all the different settings and seeing how far I can get because obviously it's a tiny camera so it hasn't got luxuries like the big ones like you guys have got, which is like macro settings and things like that, where obviously we can, you know, get you right in close, no problem at all. This one, not quite as good with it, but certainly I think from a wearing point of view, you should be able to get a better idea of exactly how I'm doing things. Because we know, especially with airbrushing, you know, if I didn't have the color cup on the top, I would fit a camera to the end of my airbrush and you could see. But I think on my head or certainly on my chest or something else like that, so when we're in the spray bay, having the wide angle that obviously you guys have got there and you saw earlier will give us a far better camera angle and things like that. So that answers my next question for this week. And that was, why haven't we seen the Wingnut Wings one yet? I've had it on YouTube a couple of weeks. Two things, one is I'm experimenting with a new camera angle with the GoPro and varying things like that and different software and you know all these little different things, tweaks, I think we'd technically call them. Secondly as well, I need to slightly get ahead and because I want to get ahead with these things is so it allows me to, when I have an off week, like next week I'm having to have a week off of the new show, you've still got all stuff that runs through. So I try and get a little bit ahead. So obviously I know lots of you were asking about how I did the word and things like that. Um, and a lot of that is to do with, is obviously just me trying to get ahead. So obviously when you see, you know, this lovely work down here and that, you know, I've just got more time to prepare for it. I can do better editing because it's not literally up to Friday. I've got nothing to show you and try and push through. So that is this week's question. Of why is it on YouTube and not actually on the main site like that? Okay, so these bits have been drying now for around about an hour, okay? And I have to say, um, I'm extremely impressed. We spoke about it before, but the Surface Primer is an absolute must. If you haven't used it and you don't use primers and you're a little bit like me and lazy, cheap, whatever you want to call it, and you've been using uh, acrylic paints, things like that, when you feel the difference, you understand why. It's as simple as that, because this is absolutely it's basically satin finish. It's a lot better, it'd be easier to spray over, but it's got great bite. And when I say bite, when you spray things at it, it just holds onto it, stops it you know, being blown away and getting spider webs and everything else like that. The coverage is absolutely amazing, and I am amazed by down here how well the top cam can see this. It's still a little bit wet, but I flooded this entire area 
I know I said about it there, but I'm still amazed by it. It must have been a millimetre thick of uh, primer all over this central area. And hopefully you can see it on the camera, but you can actually see all the detail has come back. And I thought it would flood it. If I was using acrylic, I would have lost the detail. That's the difference between this. Using it, I've been handling this and trying to rub it away and everything else for, you know, the last sort of three or four minutes just for this particular take. And I can't rub through it either. Yeah, if this was acrylic, I've got no bones, but we will go through it. So what I'm basically getting at, these new surface primers, which finally come in colours as well. So down here, to be honest, I've got this Israeli sand colour for one of my tank builds we'll be doing shortly. And I've got here Light Ghost Grey. Um, absolutely fantastic, hard as nails, lovely paint to work with, and the surface primers. We've also had a quick play with the new type of paints, but to be honest, they're just the same as the model layers. We've covered them a hundred times before. Now, this was quite amazing. I must admit, the Italeri paints I thought were gonna be basically Vallejo in a pot, okay? The things I have found that's different with it is, one, it seems to be harder. It seems to be more handleable. It's, it's a lot more resistant. Model air, you tend to wipe it away. If you're handling the model on something like a wing, we've all done it, and then after you've finished your model and you've decaled and all the rest of it, you look at it and you find out you've actually worn a patch away. To be honest, you can't with this. This stuff is hard as nails. Downside to it is, be careful with your thinners you're using. Either use their own, okay, which is this white milky one, all right, or you can actually use um, Vallejo's own new formula one. I haven't tried it with their old one, because to be honest, I haven't got any, but their new airbrush thinner does seem to be work very well. Now, I tried their new airbrush thinner with Tamiya paints, and it doesn't work as well. It's more watery. Um, it's that thing of synthetic thinners versus normal thinners, and perhaps we ought to do an on test with thinners in a few weeks' time if I get around to doing it, because this particular one, the things you notice about it immediately is, one, there's no smell to it at all. It smells like airbrush cleaner. It smells like detergent. It's not a chemical type smell. Like if you're gonna be whiffing on the end of X20A, it doesn't take that long before you've got a headache. This stuff is a lot more pleasant in the environment of when you're spraying it. Now, I'm not some biochemist now. I'm gonna tell you that this isn't gonna harm your health and you don't need a spray booth and you don't need masks and all the rest of it because obviously you still do. But I am saying though, you can get away with spraying this without annoying the rest of the family. And to be honest, that's why I moved away from enamels in the first place. You know, having young children in the house and a nagging ex and all the rest of it, um, it was just a complete nightmare. So I switched over to uh, acrylic range, Vallejo's to be honest, um, and we didn't have that problem. But as I said in the spray booth, I've been working my way back again to using enamel thinners, self-leveling thinners, things like that, sort of defeating the object. So. I am going to start to go back to using acrylics again. Uh, that said, I do love metalizer paint, so I won't be dropping them in a hurry because I don't think you can beat those at all. But certainly, if you can get them, value for money, they are a bargain because they thin forever. Paint colors and call outs, mm, okay, we're going to be honest, I'm a little bit dubious of. I don't like the way they name paints, I don't like the way they call them out because it does tend to be generic, whereas other companies do specific, and we spoke about earlier, that colour is that colour. These tend to be a little bit iffy, shall we say. You know, this is supposed to be REF green and REF brown. Well, never in a million years. You know, that's just not right. But certainly, the paints work extremely well, so if you have got your right colours to your right paints and everything else like that, you should have a lot of fun with them. As I said, unfortunately, still not available in the UK at the time of doing this show. Hopefully, they will turn up in a few weeks' time. But certainly are. They're a must-buy this week, certainly. Tarry paints get our thumbs up. Obviously, the entire Vallejo range gets our thumbs up anyway. We certainly like their thinners, and we certainly like their surface primers. So that really wraps us up for this week. Um, as I said, hopefully you're liking the new camera angles and we can play with new things with you guys down there. Okay, um, it's gonna be a nightmare for me because I've got another feed of HD coming in, which means I, it's, oh, it's terrible at the moment anyway. I'm running out of room on all the hard drives, so we're gonna have to make some space. But anyway, no show next week. I repeat, definitely no show next week. What there is gonna be instead is the full video builds for the, um, the uh, um, Century Series SIG okay and then obviously we've got the one for the tamiya out of the box when i return on the week afterwards obviously we'll have all the medals and everything else that are going to go out to you all also next week part one of the wing that wings kit will be up obviously four details will be on the main site and they'll be on the facebook page as well so you can keep up to it also we'll have it in the forum we'll get the builds going in there again so you can see exactly what i'm going in with those things as well until two weeks time then everybody have a happy easter happy modeling and take care